All I know is this violates every canon of respectable broadcasting. How are you? Hey, who wants to help me get this recording out of here? I need some muscle over here. You are listening to Blame Your Brother. Hello, 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 everyone. How are you doing? You are listening to Blame Your Brother, your favorite podcast. And we are back once again for episode 85, guys. Uh, Hopefully you can come hang out with us every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Central, as we stream the show live at blameyourbrother.tv. Come hang out with us, get in the chat, listen to the show, watch the magic happen. Okay, well, blame your brother. Like I said, there's three of us that come to you every week. First off, I am one third. I am David, aka D Brew, voice of the people, Mr. 40%, the spiritual midget, and I am joined by the man sits to the left of me. It's my brother, it's Lee. What up, everyone? Unfortunate David brother here, LeBron Pin, safety pin, and the white Farrakhan? I don't even know. I don't know. All right. I'm also joined by this guy over here. He's to the right of me. It's the one. It's the only. It's John. Hey, buddy. John here. The disappointed one. Mr. Groupon. Mr. PTI. The madman. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm slipping tonight. Oh, no. They got John Tortorella a madman. They're talking they about me? Okay, he's a madman. All right. So we're going to get this show going. Before we get started, we'll just issue the same statement we do every week. We have a legal team that listens to the episodes, and they come back. Sometimes with notes, but they always say, is there anything you guys said last week that you need to apologize for? Anything you need to take back? Anything you were wrong about? We'll start with Lee. Lee, anything you need to go off your chest there? Yeah, I just, I I didn't do a good enough job on memory of the week. Just barely got in on the end. Oh, I know, I know. So I apologize. We've been getting a lot of fan mail lately. Yeah. Fans of... uh, Michael. Michael. Mm-hmm. They're, they're really put, making a push for him to come on the show. Yeah, well, I think that's going to happen, but it's going to have to be like a bonus episode on a Saturday or something, so we'll see. Now, that's yeah. funny that you would say that. One of the one of the ladies that wrote in actually specifically mentioned that. Oh, okay, well, yeah. there you go. There you go. <laughs> Small it's world we live in, isn't yeah. it? Like psychics all over the place. Um, John, anything stands out from last episode you need to... Um, oh, after cool. after the episode, uh, Dave enlightened me on some of Kevin Smith's work, and I would like to totally uh, oh, no. reverse my uh, stance on a it. It was a who's Smith's to career. blame. Oh. You, can't, you can't reverse a who's to blame. <laughs> so you you discovered your boy Kevin Smith not as prolific as you thought he was. No, he was not. <laughs> Actually, I'm really interested in Tusk. All like, right. You guys, we talked about it after the show, and you guys were like, you gave us like a two-hour movie review I on did, it. I did, yes. You broke down like every scene, and I was like, this is actually sounds very interesting. Like, if you were to describe to me mall rats in the same style of synopsis, I'd be like, who the hell would want to see that? And it's a good movie, right? The Walrus... Like the way you described it, I'm like, that well, don't don't amazing. spoil it for everybody. But that sounds yeah, amazing. so Tusk is a movie by Kevin Smith, and I I say I don't know off the show <laughs> on the show. I don't even know. It is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. So I think this, in, this includes Batman and Robin. Yeah, uh, uh, Blair Witch Two. I mean, it's in. Uh, it said it's one of the worst. It's in those. <laughs> yeah, it's in category with those movies. Yes, one hundred percent. Yes, it's I'm terrible. To, what happened in Blair Witch Two? I want to think. I, I think I saw that. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I know it was so bad. It was. It was one of those movies I went to the theater to see. I was so disappointed to use John's term. I <laughs> wow. I mean, I went and saw it opening. I was a big Blair Witch fan. Like, yeah, who we, was it? We even went out. Me and Lee tried to recreate the Blair Witch Project in a. Uh, Adams, Tennessee, for the Bell Witch Project. It was me, Lee, and two of our buddies. We went out and basically trespassed in people's property and tried to get to the Bell Witch Cave, and, well, we did not succeed. No, we did succeed. There was a dude that was cursed. Yeah. A friend of ours was permanently cursed. Oh, no, no. I mean, we didn't make it that night. Yeah, yeah, no. We went back the next morning. We weren't trying to get to the morning. cave. We oh, were, we were. We were uh, investigating the obelisk. We ran into the cat. You don't oh, remember the geez. cat? They ran into a cat and they think it's haunted. I mean, give me oh, a Oh, come break. on, man. It's way more creepy what so happened. So our buddy, Kenny, who we've talked about before, him and our buddy Chris went out and they filmed some stuff and they filmed smoke coming out of the ground, quote unquote, and me and John, upon cl- closer inspection, <laughs> discovered this was a lit cigarette. <laughs> you know, Kenny always had a problem with like... Telling the truth. <laughs> 
No, telling lies, but they're like the worst <laughs> lies ever. I mean, they literally lit a cigarette. Let the smoke come off the ground. They're like, the ground is smoking, man. Come on, man. I was like, this is so dumb. Are you sure it was a cigarette in hindsight? Oh, he admitted it to us later. Well, I'm we, saying, on you, the video, you, you could sure see. It was a I watched the video. I wasn't oh, even yeah. there. I wish it was <laughs> Watching stronger. the video, I could tell it was a cigarette. So anyways, That's how anyway, bad it was. The so lawyers, yes, I was, lawyers. I was big into Blair Witch, and I was very disappointed. So we're going to watch Tusk. The three of us are. I'm going to rewatch it, I guess. And we'll have to have a bonus episode just about this amazing movie. How about that? How Let's about see. that? All right, John. So you got that off your chest. Uh, Cash me watching Tusk. All right. Well, I'm clean. So we're going to keep moving along. Lee, did yeah, you do I, anything I, this past week? I made a discolored joke on Uh-oh. who's to blame. Oh, about felt, fat people? Yeah, I've been feeling really bad about that. I know, because aren't you the righteous one that got on me and John about we wouldn't date a 400-pound woman, <laughs> and you just wrote us like dogs about it and ponies Well, the problem, around. I feel I myself think that I'm a kind of a chubby person, so I kind of, it's self-deprecating Stop. in a lot of ways. So I apologize, though. That was on me. It, it probably will happen again, though. You owned it in that moment, too. That's what's bad, yeah. John. Yeah. Well, I felt so I feel kind of insulated whenever we do a who's to blame because I feel like I can say whatever I want and I'm not beholden. That's uh, that's an interesting take right there. That that, that could give us room for uh, w- bad pass in the future if we're allowed to say anything we want on who's yeah. to blame. Well, that's what I without feel like, any consequences. I mean, I feel like you have to pick a position and defend. Hitler, go! <laughs> <laughs> who's to blame? Who's to blame? Well, well, give us a hot take on I Hitler, mean, David. Go well, ahead. I mean, Hitler did help uh, with world population. If you want to look at it like that. <laughs> wow, it's not even who's to blame yet. <laughs> you said give us a hot take. You're not supposed to say okay. <laughs> it don't get much hotter. No, that is pretty hot. So anyway, wow. so there we go. Okay, so did you do know anything this past week, man? Anything that stood out? Yeah, like my wife uh, has this new thing where she bought a pass to the zoo. So now it's like we're always going up to the zoo. Have you been to the zoo lately? Not late. I mean, last year. Do I you think. enjoy zoos? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, I, I understand there's some hypocrisy at a zoo, but yeah, I do. I What's do enjoy the hypocrisy s- going on at the zoo. Yeah. You're supposed to be an animal lover, but they're all caged up. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, you know, it's you're taking these animals that are meant to roam, you know, the earth, like lions and things. <laughs> roam the earth. You're putting them in cages for people to enjoy. But aren't aren't a lot of them rescues? That's what I've been told. I, I mean, not all of them could be, you know, and you see the elephants out there and the giraffes. I mean, it's nice to see them for sure, but I, I don't, yeah, I always leave feeling a little bit like, eh, you know, but, what, you know, I'm bad enough that I keep going, so what can I say? But So I, so the problem was, I, you know, whatever, walking at the zoo with a newborn child, that's, an, that's a mm-hmm. fine activity. I was blown away. I don't know if this is a tourism thing. The number of ugly people at the zoo mm. oh, was no. a little, oh, it was no. a little off kilter. Do you have oh. any? Did he just get done apologizing <laughs> for talking about that. I'm going to let, okay. I'm going to let John hand. John, what do you think about the number of ugly people at the zoo? I don't go to the zoo to check out the people. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I want Lee to clarify. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? My I friend? was just like looking around and like everyone we passed was just like, Okay, what if you saw me and John at the zoo? Would you be saying the same thing? Oh, probably me, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Well, I maybe mean, like that's the thing. Like if you're if you're you know if you're at a zoo and you're looking around, you're like, who are all these animals? And you have to, I'm an animal too, so maybe. But I think I, I, I mean, for the most part, I mean, who's gonna get dolled up? Who's gonna put on? Who's who's trying to look good when they go to the zoo? What Jason said, are so. you talking like people of Walmart <laughs> level? I don't know, man. Like Arkansas level, you know? Oh, my God. Shots fired. That's where John used to live. Mm, yeah, I did I mean, live there one the, time. The math adds up, right? <laughs> Ooh. Jason Lowe. I don't know. I just thought if you had, I, I I was like looking around. I didn't have a, I thought you might have something, but I, w- I, know, I just I wrote don't. it off as tourism. Next yeah? time I'll go look for the ugly people at the zoo. I mean, nothing stands out. I've been to the zoo. Actually, I've been a couple of times the last year. And I feel I'm, like I have too, and it was just an anomaly of just like. Ugly people. Yeah. It was like closing time at the zoo, which is like, you know, five, six o'clock in the afternoon. It was like a Tuesday. Hmm. Does, do these things matter? Like, I, I don't know. I, it's very strange. I have you know. ever been somewhere that was just filled with ugly people? Yeah. Arkansas. Uh, <laughs> uh, local <laughs> wrestling shows. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. Can we draw like an anomaly? I think there's a the theme two? there. I don't think that's an anomaly at all. <laughs> I went to... Uh, get I went, in the cage, brother. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I enjoy going, but don't get me wrong. There's some definite Walmart 
level and below it of these wrestling shows. So like Walmart. I, but I've always said, and I say this all the time now, if you look around somewhere, you know, there's a whole bunch of people and you're there with them. Yeah. I mean, you're kind of those people at that point. You know what I I'm know, saying? That's what I, I felt. So I you felt a little. You felt Ill. a little ugly. Okay. Felt a little ill. Maybe you missed the sign out front. Ugly yeah. people day. Sorry, ugly people. I'm there with you, you though. Sorry, we're sorry. So you went to the zoo. All right, what do you think of the zoo? Speaking of the animals, um, uh, I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. Well, what a take, man. I don't have a problem with everyone's. Zoos. Everyone's just on <laughs> bated breath for your next hot take this episode. Oh, <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> I mean, right. it's cool to see the animals. Well, speaking, of, oh, anything you, John? Um, What'd you do this past week? You lost some weight this past I week. I did didn't lose you? some weight. Uh, last week I had the week off, and uh, I got a lot more sleep than I normally do. Yeah. I had three cheat days, but I still lost like ten pounds. There you so, go. Look at John losing so the weight. Sleep is so you're important. on the you're on that seafood diet. No. What Every, is that? Everything you see, you eat. No. <laughs> I still even even when I have cheat days, I still keep it uh conservative when it comes to how much i yeah let's I put in there tell the viewers what you're conservative <laughs> well i mean the average uh to, to maintain your weight you actually eat like 300 carbs grams okay, of carbs so a day the normal person what you told and me so was, even on my cheat days i still have under 100 carbs what you told me was pasta i had uh spaghetti two, two pizzas <laughs> these aren't different days <laughs> still mm. a All slice right, of, a slice of pizza has uh uh, uh, like a pizzeria style sli- slice of pizza, which is uh, probably between two and three, s- the size of two and three slices of pizza, uh, has about 40 grams of carbs in it. So, I mean, I was still... 40 grams of carbs? Yeah, and, and one slice. I have no you idea. You got the computer right there, I have man. no idea. I, 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 you can look. <laughs> Go check. It's carb talk on blame your brother. Yeah, but do you, anyway, do you even lift, bro? Do you even lift? No. Maybe you should start lifting. I I get I, swole. I can't I can't diet and exercise. I can do one or the other. I don't. It's just it's hard for me to do both. But imagine how cool you would look in your grinder profile if you were all ripped. Oh no! If you're all shredded up. Well, if it was legitimately my profile that I created, and that'd be one thing. But uh, I'm. I know right now you're relying on like people photoshopping your head and to pick onto other people's bodies, but like that could legitimately be you, you know? Let's okay. So John discovered that there may or may not be a grinder account <laughs> created for him by one of the listener by one of the fantastic listeners of the show. Now we said last week uh, to explain over under for John and the listeners at home is that you pick a number and you go over or under that number. So, it, it, for example, John will do one real quick, sports, real quick. Number of championships LeBron James will win before he retires, 0.5, over or under? Over. So you think he'll win at least one more championship? Yeah. Okay. So if it was 1.5. It would be two. Yeah. yeah. So that's, okay. So we said over, under matches or whatever they're called, links or well, I don't know what the crap it's called. But anyways, swipe right. Let's say <laughs> swipe right. <laughs> how many grinder matches would John get? Well, according to what the information we have, he got eight, and we said last week you don't you get less than three. So you are you're doing you're exceeding expectations, John. Um, Yay! And if you <laughs> oh no, I see the account pulled up now. Um. I'm just gonna keep going. I don't even know if you're if you're watching the chat right now, you can see the video. If not, you'll just have to go so back. So last week, the we had a heavy discussion on catfishing. Yeah. <laughs> so someone catfished <laughs> Twitterello on the grinder, and there is a Christmas tree with. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Even <laughs> wow, wow. some interesting things on that Christmas tree. So what was least. the over and under that we had? Over under was three point five. So nine, nine. So yeah, I said he went over. So there you go. So if you have matched up with John on Grinder, please send us a message at BYB Pod on Twitter or Facebook and let us know if you're one of the many matches. And if you want to go read the stuff, um, just I, it's hashtag BYB Pod. It will come up. You can see some of the chat responses that I'm not going to read right now. But anyway, so how does that make you feel, John? Uh, it it does. It's funny. There you go. It's funny. So John, I mean, not really that offended by it. So there we go. 
All right, good deal. Well, um, speaking of, I don't even know how to segue that. I had a segue and it got wiped out. We did a poll last week okay, on, on the old Twitter. And we asked a question that we asked on last episode because basically Donald Trump and Joe Biden were chirping at each other on Twitter. Basically, each other, they were both saying they were going to kick each other's butt. And, you know, they knocked the other one out. So we asked the question that had to be asked. Donald, so Biden versus Donald Trump in a fight, UFC style, who wins? Not who's the better person or who's got the better political views. Who would win the physical fight? We put that Biden and Trump were our two options and Biden won. With 72% of the vote, Trump got 28%, and there were 25 votes on that. So that's a pretty overwhelming majority of people think Biden would win. They had a bunch of comments about it. A lot of people thought, oh, Grandpa Joe was stronger. <laughs> I still stick by I think Trump would take him. Okay, so here's the th- if Scaramucci is telling you anything, you should believe the opposite. So if Scaramucci is telling you that Donald Trump is the bastion of health, he's not. But he didn't say he was a great fighter. He just said he I could mean, shoot a basketball. I mean, yeah, you know. standing still. It has yeah. Here's the nothing other, to do with uh, <laughs> endurance. <laughs> Here's the other thing that kind of upsets me about this. It's unfair. Why? Like, do people even know who Joe Biden is would be my first question. Yeah. We would be surprised at the number of people who don't. But no. it's, it's not fair to put a vice president up against a president. Why? It's just not. It's apples and oranges. Well, then we, we started talking about the video game we could make. And actually, a listener, I forget who it was, said it was, oh, uh, Chris from Decibel Geek said it was a great idea. He said FDR with the weaponized wheelchair would be the greatest. <laughs> I agree. Right. So, okay, so you're a big Trump street fighter, right? Okay, Ronald Reagan versus Donald Trump. Oh, Ronald Reagan. <laughs> so Ronald oh. Reagan just runs the table? No, I don't. No, I mean, Ronald Reagan, his, his whole life, his career, and, and, and he had to be fit. Yeah. And Why so, did I mean, Ronald Reagan he was an have actor. to be fit? He was an actor. He played like, in cowboy movies and stuff. There's a lot of action involved. So you're telling me every actor has been fit in their lives? No, not every actor, but every actor has been in, in, in quasi uh, action movies, yes. So is there anything That's that true. would you, is there anything Ronald Reagan ever did wrong, ever? Did he ever take like a bad poop? I'm sure he's, I'm sure I mean, he's done I'm plenty sure. of Are you wrong. guys, are you sure? You asked me are a question sure? about something. <laughs> I just feel like for you, this Ronald Reagan is like a. Uh, oh, I would pick. It's a fairy tale. I would pick George Washington would whoop Ronald Reagan's ass. Would he? Oh, <laughs> Ron, Ron, I mean George Washington is probably one of the toughest guys. Based he's on a what? general, dude. He was, he a, was tough a general. Man. What are you talking? He was the in, wooden teeth. I'm confused. He was literally in war, my friend. He, he was, was a general. That should say in, a, in a act of war. He yeah. helped if, the he revolutionary. Helped, war. Yes, you don't it think was there revolutionary. Were, you don't think there were fights on that battlefield? <laughs> that he he fought on Christmas. He crossed a river in the snow yeah he's tough yeah so i think so everybody's making brackets now everybody's got their bracket you know i got the disney movie bracket the marvel hero bracket we need to make the president fight club Let's, I bracket think, why bother we already know the winner who no i just george washington does fdr get weapons okay on his we'll say fdr and george washington oh, make it well, to hold the on. if he get weapons then we'll, yeah we'll work, he wins we'll work it backwards but i mean <laughs> talking about hand-to-hand combat oh, alone hand-to-hand combat okay I'll i'd go probably F- go with with teddy roosevelt teddy roosevelt would be up there abraham lincoln would be up there yeah Why he's, he's abraham he's, lincoln? he's got that reach man he was murdered with, with a, a gun, <laughs> hand-to-hand combat. Is this not comprehending? He was, he was murdered in a movie theater. It sounded really soft. He was a freaking log splitter. This guy <laughs> that's has a log splitter. Yes, before he was president. Man, he was a working man. Not all presidents are like they are now. Yes, the, all of them now are just weenies. I mean, they just go to school for that. They get in public office. Before this happened, bro, these were I'm like... I'm talking about your top tiers would be would be uh, Lincoln, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, uh, Andrew Jackson. Yeah. He's um, a tough one too. Nobody like nobody likes Andrew. You can't let Andrew. No, 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 we're not Jackson. talking about like. We're, we're talk- talking about fighting. <laughs> yes, this is hand to hand combat. Come on, That's man. <laughs> no else. political views. What man. is Andrew Jackson's best weapon? The tears of Indians. <laughs> I mean, come on. Now, if we're talking a video game, that's different. That'd be fun. But I'm talking, we're going to make, we're gonna, I'm going to make one, and I'll put it out there to the people. We'll okay, see who wins. That's fine. All right. I, did, I wanted a description of each president, though. I mean, we gave you the top five. Bare I mean, knuckled boxing, right? Yes. With like the wooden poles. UFC, UFC style. UFC, UFC style? Yeah. yeah, but none of them would know how to grapple. So it, it would just be a fist Bare knuckled boxing. Okay, bare knuckled boxing, sure. I, uh, Teddy Roosevelt might be up there too. That's I, what I'm saying. I think I think he would take the, take it all. But I mean, those other ones would be 
I'll I'll do some I will do some research this week. I'll try to find like the top like the top tier and I'll rank them and we'll put it out there. Right. So, so if we had a uh, Kennedy seemed fit, he might be up there too. That's true. If we had a bracket on this show. Who would win? What's the bracket? Who's the bare, best of us three? Bare knuckle boxing. Oh, me all day. <laughs> Why do you think you would win at bare knuckle boxing? I mean, I got reach number one over both of you, and I just feel I'm stronger than both of you. <laughs> I mean, based on like just your ego alone. I guess, yeah, sure. Why not? What do you think? Who do you think would win? It's a good question. Are you picking? I mean, are we talking about UFC? Or are we talking about bare boxing. knuckle boxing? Boxing, yeah. Bare knuckle boxing. <sighs> See, I don't know anything about boxing. So, <laughs> so who? Yeah. So let's go to John first. <laughs> Um, David, it's not much sl- of a bracket with three people, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'm on the I'm on the far side of the. Oh, bracket. you get the buy. Okay, yeah, awesome. Buy. I mean, I think uh, I I don't I don't think I'd be able to beat beat David yeah. in, in just boxing. So could you beat me? Um, it depends. <laughs> wow. What does it depend on? I've seen you throw punches. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you can throw some haymakers, but they 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 miss wildly most oh, of the okay. time. Okay. <laughs> so if you could connect them, yeah, you you whoop me, but. Uh, it it depends on how how much your accuracy is there. Okay, so let's throw. Okay, you have to. Fu- you're in the. We throw Biden and Trump in the bracket, and okay. then we'll walk away from this bare knuckle box discussion. Okay. Obviously, David, you've already declared yourself winner of the BYB podcast. Sure. Yeah. Biden and Trump. Oh, I'd whoop their ass. Both of them. Both <laughs> at of the them. same time. Oh, probably at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna do like a? Nyuk, 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 nyuk? I mean, if you cannot, the only reason I said Trump would probably beat Biden because he's got more mass on him. Because once again, this is unregulated boxing rules. I mean, if you put a two hundred fifty pound guy against a hundred sixty five pound guy, I mean, the two hundred fifty pound if, guy is gonna win most no, of the time. If they know how to box, not. Uh, well, if they, they've been trained. If he doesn't, if he doesn't know how to move around, yeah. If he's been trained to box and the other guy, that's is why not. there are weight limitations in boxing, just for this reason. Trained. But all of them are trained, though. Yeah, yeah. But still, I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree with Lee on that one. It really depends on, and plus, I mean, if that. I mean, you versus Kenny in a, in a boxing match. Oh, I destroy him. But he's got weight on you. Yeah. That's to see my point. But yeah, that's but, my point but, versus. Are Trump we gonna and, get? Are we gonna Biden. do weights around the table? I'm 180, 175. I have no idea. Okay, well there you go. Awesome, <laughs> cool story. Why bro. mention the what, weights? If one, you don't even I'm gonna start getting a way. drop. That says cool story, bro. Just for you. you All right, I'll go you, 170. You, I'm I'm gonna go 170. That's that's not how weight works. <laughs> you don't just throw a number out there. I don't just don't. Do people weigh themselves on a regular basis? Well, me and John do because we're losing. Yeah, weight. we're trying to lose weight. <laughs> All right, well I'm going in the other direction, so you can kind of understand why. Who I do you not. think would win? Give us an answer and let's move on. Who me between? Yes, bare knuckle three. boxing. Yes, I carry around pocket sand at all times, so I'm going to go with myself. Okay, well, that's cheating, so you're disqualified automatically. So I'm a cheater. I guess, I guess they would win. So it's a street fight or boxing rule? That's it's like John Van Von Claude Dam and oh, uh, Bloodsport? Bloodsport. Blood yeah. <laughs> he gets blinded and still wins. Or yeah, yeah, I'd still win in that. Okay, all yeah, right, good deal. Moving on. All right, well, look for that presidential bracket. I will try to work on it. This week, I'll do my best. Okay, so we got some stories, some updates real quick. Number one. Uh, t-shirt sales are still going on t-shirt pre-orders donations whatever you want to call it so we're at right now 75 dollars. we're trying to raise 225 250 i mean 200 would be nice we're looking for that range so we need a, a lot more donations five dollars gets you a shirt so if you want to go to bybpod.com slash shirts that's bybpod.com slash shirts it'll take you to the gofundme page five dollars we'll send you a shirt ten dollars we'll send you a shirt We'll mention you on the podcast. I mean, if you can do 10, that's great. It helps us with uh, shipping costs when we send them out. If you want to give the full amount, you're a new executive producer of the show forever. Every episode, you will have some hand in crafting. So, Michael Anthony, if you want to be the producer, here's your chance. All, $175 gets it to you right now if you donate it today or tomorrow. So, if Whenever I donate listening. $175, does that mean you have to do whatever I say? Well, if you read the description, I said you can suggest topics. You can, we'll try to hit those topics, but it doesn't mean every topic you mention. And you are an executive producer already. So why would you donate the money? I'm an executive producer of the show. Do we have titles? Yeah, I mean, first mic, <laughs> second mic for Lee, third mic for John. We just got orders of mics. Yeah. That's not really a title, is well, it? I mean, you know, it is what it is. Producer, I guess. I mean, I'm a producer for sure. So you're, I'm the executive producer. Yeah, sure. And you're just a producer. I'm just a producer. Yeah. John's okay. what we call the talent. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
I think. That's true. Side chair. What what was the okay, so if we think about like Howard Stern, there was Howard Stern, there's the woman, what was her name? Gloria. Robin. 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 Sorry, yes. <laughs> what were you Gloria? Man, I don't know where uh, I got that from. Okay, Robin. Robin Quivers, and then yeah. there was uh Stuttering John. Stuttering John. So I would be Howard Stern. Who was the other guy? Uh, Bob Bob Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. <laughs> they had a couple of guys. Um <laughs> so Joke Man, uh Jackie. J- Jackie Joke Man. Jack okay, Man. so you're Howard Stern. <laughs> I'm Howard Stern. <laughs> Stuttering John. Stutter and John wasn't really on the show that much. No, yeah, he like was. A, well, you're you're Baba out, Booey like, then. Yeah, no, Baba Booey was his executive producer. Okay, well, you're Baba Booey, Lee, and then John would have to be Stuttering John. <laughs> I kind of or, or, or Jack Man, whatever his name is, Jackie, Jackie the Joke Man. I feel like I would be uh, Robin. Okay, and he would be Baba. Yeah, Booey. Yeah, you're more Baba Booey. And man. then Marlon, Mar Half Pint would be uh, Stuttering John because Stuttering, yeah. Stuttering John always like goes out in the field yeah. and stuff. Okay, so, you know. yeah. Okay, that so David's sense. Howard Stern, Lee's Robin, and John's Baba Booey. There you go. <laughs> so we need you to get these shirts. Is this short and long of that conversation? Um, hey, we talked about Katie Quackenbush uh, many episodes ago. It was one of our more popular episodes. Um, Katie Quackenbush, if you don't know, lives in Nashville, Tennessee, or was in Nashville, Tennessee, when a homeless man approached her, she shot him, and now she's being tried for, I don't know what she, I mean, uh, negligent homicide or something like that. I don't know what it is. Well, anyways, this past week, Blame Your Brother has been in touch with Miss Katie Quackenbush on Instagram, and it's actually her. I did do some research to make sure it was her. It's the actual real Katie Quackenbush. And she has informed me that her story will come out, that uh, the media has told a lot of lies about it, that this guy that uh, attacked, went after her, this homeless guy, was crazy. She shared an email with me that his son had sent their lawyers from her, uh, the homeless man who believed a chip had been implemented in his body, and he was on a mission, I guess, to uh, kill Middle Eastern people. So, and <laughs> apparently he had... Uh, uh, harassed and attacked this Middle Eastern man as well. So she said none of that was uh, mentioned in the news, which I didn't see it mentioned in the news I at all. I did not either. No, no so, chips. So I'm confused. Are you saying Katie was accused of looking like a Middle Eastern man? No, she she looks kind of, I mean, she looks kind of Middle Eastern, I guess, has a look to her. She's actually not white. She said she's actually Native American, which they also failed to point out. And she said the car that she bought, that they said her dad bought her, she actually bought that car on her own. She was oh, well, she was a, she was a stripper, and she made money doing that. And she said she did not, you know. Uh, some of this I read from uh, East Nashville News as well. I'm not. It's not like I'm breaking all this news. If you go to East Nashville News, which is a great website, I love it. But they did an interview with her, and she she came out with a lot of this stuff. So I just wanted to get that out there. I know she was. Uh, that was a popular episode, man. That was. Uh, so can I can I just drop it. this quote off Instagram? Evidently, sure. I'm not white privileged because my father has a good job and went to college. My dad is the first person in his family even to go to college. And the reason why he became a lawyer was to help people who get ruined by the corruption of the legal system because they are poor. I, th- I mean, is that accurate? I'm not white privileged because my father had well, a good job. She's and not went even to college? white. She's a card holding native American and her father's family is from Italy. Talking to her this week, there was definitely some stuff left out. I feel because of she was attractive and her name, the news pounced on the story. <laughs> Can I drop another quote? Sure. <laughs> reason I have a Porsche <laughs> is not. That's all. That's, that's so it. the reason I have a Porsche is not for my dad is, is I bought it. <laughs> I, I bought a car myself from dancing and with help from a Persian, a Persian sugar daddy developer in Nashville. <laughs> yeah. That probably is not helping her cause. I, I mean, what's it got to do with what, though? You know, it says... <laughs> a Persian sugar daddy developed. Well, she tried to go buy the car, and they treat her like crap because of her appearance and everything. So oh my God. I'm like, Jason Chat feels different from what we originally said and what's originally reported. This is true. This is why we have a justice system. But the media is selling certain stories to sell advertisement, to sell viewers, and... And they like stories like this, and they like they do like to report half the news a lot of the time. I mean, that's just a fact. You she know. bought. She self admitted to buying a Porsche. Okay. Because she wanted to f tell someone to f off for judging them at the at the Porsche place. She bought a Porsche to prove a point to a car dealer. Yeah. Do you think this woman is making good life decisions? 
It's probably know. not the brightest thing. He's like, well, say, you I got me. This is not. This you is, made me all that commission. Oh, darn. This well, is not a news story. East Nash this is look, a quote from her, right? Uh, but no, East National News looked into it, and they said she was an escort. What turns out, one of the dancers she worked with made a fake ad. John, you'd, you'd be familiar with that. Made a fake ad on, on Craigslist or wherever they put ads up with her number on it, and she didn't do it. East National News looked into this story and found out that that number did not belong to her. It actually did belong to another dancer, so or the, or something belonged to it in the post. So I don't know, man. I just to point out everything you see on the news, it just you can't believe yeah, it. Take it with a grain of salt. You know, you got to do your own investigation. Sometimes you got to look at things from a. You just can't accept the narrative <laughs> that's being delivered. This quote, this, these quotes get juicier and juicier the further you go. Go ahead. I can't even read that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Well, just go to East Nashville News. Is that the website? What's the website? East Nashville News? East Nashville News. Dot com. It's a great website, and there's an entire uh, write-up about Katie Quackenbush you can find on the website. East Nashville News dot com. Go check those guys out. Go check out that story, and then let us know what you think. I'm on Katie Quackenbush's side now. I mean, I'm just going to be can honest. Tell. I can tell. I, I Me am. Too. Me too, man. No, you're the not. And you're against her. You're against this person who... <laughs> who was a dancer who's a dancer nothing wrong with being a dancer you hear david saying that on this podcast there's nothing wrong with strippers and if she made her money that way i don't have a problem with it i lee if you if you what is what's wrong she can't be a dancer and make no, her money no that's not I've, what's I, I love, what's the joke would the jokes be here if this was a guy telling the story would you be still against him if a if a guy in a coding business went out and bought a porsche would you be jumping all over his stuff Listen, man, I, this is my new favorite woman. Are you kidding me? Okay. She's got some hot takes on this, uh, All right. this, this article here. <laughs> get, can we get her on the show? I'm trying. Is that going to happen? I, well, she said she, she can't probably talk. probably can't she because can't, of the Yeah, lawyers. she did say she can't, but as soon as she can, we're going to try to get her on the show. So so who is is this? Who is she talking to here? East National News. Because she is talking her, she's talking her ass off Yeah, well, no, she talked to me quite a bit. I mean, a lot of this stuff was the same stuff she was. Miss Quackenbush has nothing to hide. So, Katie Quackenbush, free Katie Quackenbush. That's right, going to be. I'm on board with that. It's going to be the new shirt. Free. Katie Those are after the misogyny alert shirt. All right, all together. Free, free Katie, Katie Quackenbush. Quackenbush. Free, free Katie Quackenbush. That's quite a name. We that's, can't even. That's hard to say. say. <laughs> it's hard to say. Sorry. All right. Anyway, but they want to make my story juicy, like I'm an animal. So, do you know who's in Nashville today? Speaking of someone we talked about on last week's episode, John, do you know who's in town today? I think it might be Miss Stormy Daniels. Miss Stormy Daniels, who we talked about last week. And, I mean, you surely have heard of Stormy Daniels, who did the interview with Trump. She's actually in town. She'll be at the Deja Vu Adult Club tonight <gasps> doing, doing feature dances and... There we go. She is making her rounds now. They said there's going to be protesters outside when she gets there. Well, I already told you I'll have to take off directly after the podcast. That's where, that's where you're going. Yeah. Check out Stormy. They only have so many spots. You he have to reserve was, them he's, ahead of time. He's going to a show. I yeah. Um, I wonder what she's showing. Deja Vu states they booked this way before all this news hit. I don't. I don't know about that. I you know. I, well, they said they booked it when it first came out. Oh, okay. in hopes that the story would take off. Well, and, there we go. Yeah, they they hit paid did. her with this one. So first time she's ever been in Nashville. I think they're gonna make a lot of money. Is that true? That's what she said. Hmm. I don't know if she meant just stripping or oh, okay. visiting, but yeah. I mean, if you used to visit adult strip clubs, like you know, like certain people in the show did. There are featured dancers sometimes. I saw Lisa Ann at Deja Vu one time, long time ago before she uh, became Wait, famous. Who for, is Lisa Ann? She became famous for doing the Sarah Palin parody. She, and she's uh, oh, so okay. she now she's like a sports. She does sports talk, and I think she quit with the uh, adult films. But good for her. She did a feature dance way back in like 1997. So I mean, she's had a longer career, I guess. And I guess Stormy Daniels has been around for a long time as well. But so that when the, they're doing this, they always put them on billboards around town. And there was one that actually piqued my interest. It okay. was uh, a little person. I bet it did. It was a little person that was wearing like a dinosaur. No, stop. Outfit. No. Yes. What does it say? I don't know. What do you mean? What is it? Oh, say? it's a deja vu. Yeah, it was a deja vu stripper. It just had a picture of a little person in a I mean, dinosaur it was, it was outfit. To, it was someone else. It was like wow. a normal. So they have a, a a little person stripper. Yeah, I think there was pools, baby baby pools of baby oil. Sh sure, I mean that's it could be at a strip too. club. Um, I don't know. 
If I was still a single man, I would definitely go see a little person in a dinosaur outfit at a strip club. I would get a <laughs> dance a hundred percent on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no no matter the cost, huh? What do you do you think Stormy Daniels is handing out lap dances? No, 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 no. When they feature dance, they dance on stage, they get That's tips it. and things like that. And then they go back and sit down at a table and then you can go over there and take a picture with them and get their autograph or whatever, certain amount of money. The reason I remember Lisa Ann, I know this is all in my head. I'm not an idiot or anything, but I mean, well, I don't know who was there. But anyway, um, <laughs> I, don't, I really don't know who was there. I know Kenny was there for sure. Um, I don't know if John was there or not. But I remember she kept looking over at our table and like kind of smiling. I thought that was kind of weird at the time because I looked over at Ken. I was like, dude, uh, I'm kind of tripping out here, man. I think she's like staring at me. I was like, so I, so I remember Lee saying just because of that. Just for the record, uh, if anyone here listening has ever seen the movie Swingers, David has had countless Vince Vaughn moments where uh, someone was checking him out. Hey, that most of the time they have. But anyway, I, hey, yeah, I just, just said, like in the movie when I'm sure she wanted me to come over there and give her thirty she's bucks. She's making baby faces at me, man. She probably wanted me to buy a Polaroid picture or whatever, you know, whatever. Polaroid, yeah. shake it like a Polaroid. Yeah. So, so did did anyone listen to the sixty minutes? Interview? Oh yes, a hundred percent. I didn't. Give me the update. Give me the quick and skinny. On I feel it. less. I mean, I feel this is more of the same we've heard. I mean, she really met, nothing. New? I've read this before. Before she had the interview, I mean, she met Donald Trump. They uh, they didn't have sex the first time they met. Then the second time they met, they had sex. He's a big uh, fan of Shark Week. Apparently, yeah, the first time she ever news. met him, she spanked his butt with a magazine. Okay. She said he was in there talking about himself a lot. She just goes, "Does that work for you? What you're doing right now?" She goes, "You're a bad boy. You need to be spanked." And playfully spanked them and right. nothing like Obviously. like as, as everybody would want it but the second time they had sex <laughs> together and then after that um just kind of went away because he was trying to get her on the apprentice Alle- allegedly out. i you know who knows if he did or didn't did she talk about his no she said i, there are, I thought that was the big reveal no i mean alleg- there might be pictures there might not i don't know but the bigger story is that doesn't it matter anymore if you sign a, a contract or you make an agreement with someone not to release information? Are we in the age now where, um, what's it called when you sign that? It's called a NDA. D- NDA. Non-disclosure. Are NDAs agreement. worthless now? If, I mean, I mean, can you pretty much not say that? Okay. Any, like when the president of the United States of America you can just boldface lie yeah. to everyone, how can you really trust any American's word? Do you think George, do you think you could trust George Washington's word? Yeah. When he was coming across the Potomac, I think it kind of started with Kennedy to Nixon is where you started getting people just yeah, lying that's probably in, true. in the media. You know, well, I, yellow I, journalism started way before then. But yes, but it's probably the, the average Vietnam person. War. The average person couldn't read. Oh, you? T- I'm talking way back in the day. You know, the more media started around the Kennedy, Bay of though. Pigs. You know what I'm saying? Kennedy was like the. Well, for for those who don't know, the Kennedy versus Nixon was the first televised uh, debate. Who would win in the bare knuckle box? First Between who? Nixon and Kennedy? Yeah. Oh, At the I'd, time they were running, Kennedy. Kennedy. Hands down. Yeah. Ford would be another good one. He was yeah. a football player. So, all right. Well, anyway, so <laughs> so I, I don't know. I don't really care. I mean, truthfully, I, whether he slept with a woman or not, this was 10 years it ago. It doesn't matter. We know the man's a dog. Doesn't like, it's not like we think he's some great ver- I think you know, pillar do. of virtue or something. I think something. people do see Trump as a virtue pillar. Oh, I hope to God not. I mean, my God. It, Are they deaf and blind? It's like uh, Talladega Nights where it's like, you know. Do you think he slept with that porn star, yes or no? Stormy Daniels? Yeah. She said yes. But, but that doesn't mean it's true. Do you think it's true? She denied yes, it true. several times before. Without a doubt, it's true. John, 100%, you believe this happened? Um, um Yeah, probably. All right. Yeah, I mean, it probably did, unfortunately. And once again, we live in a society where if someone can just same, say something so and it's true. It doesn't really matter. Are like, you in the same situation? If I was in the same situation? Yeah. Wh- who am I? Trump? Yeah. Okay. You're what's, Trump. What's the question? Stormy Daniels. Would you have an affair with Stormy Daniels? Uh, she's not my type, so no. I don't, <laughs> I mean. I was mainly just trying to entrap you, man. I you think John, that was a test. John, John does, it, does John? that look like my type right there? No. No, I don't. That's everything I don't like. I mean, so. So with John? You're, now, if you're asking me if I was the president of the United States of America and I was a dog and I was talking about grab him by the you-know-what yeah. and all this, and yeah, I'd probably be banging <laughs> porn stars. I mean, of course I would. I mean, There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'd pick a better quality, but, you know. It, I mean, Lisa Ann, right? Lisa Ann, for sure. Yeah, back in the day. Especially when she looked like Sarah Palin, but. Eh. You betcha. 
You betcha, honey. So anyway, so she's in Nashville. If you if you go see her, I'd love to uh love to know that. All right, let's go to the story about the I mean, oh. we can drive out there afterwards and just All right, get we'll, some protest signs. We'll or do that, sure. Did those dinosaur costumes ever came out? That would be a great time to debut those. That would. <laughs> be weird. We get on the news for sure. <laughs> Um. All right. Let's go to the volleyball story real quick, as it lays into um appearance of women and and the day and age we live in. It says ex Cincinnati volleyball player kicked off team for a sexy Instagram photo. It says a former University of Cincinnati volleyball player is filing a lawsuit against the school and women's volleyball coach, claiming she was kicked off the team over a sexy Instagram over sexy Instagram photos. So apparently we got him up on the screen here. Um, she yeah, no, scale of one to ten. Oh, how does she look? Rate my oh. rate my news picture. Oh, she's she's like a eight for sure, man. Yeah, she cute. She's good looking for yeah. sure. Um, so what happened is she posted a couple of pictures on Instagram, and apparently her coach told her to take them down. And if you look at the pictures here, so you have in your mind what you'd be. It's okay, these were like bikini shots or lingerie shots you know that's what you're thinking you're like all right man like what's going on right now so her coach basically like i said he sent her a thing and said you have to uh are the pictures not on there keep going there's somewhere i thought maybe not well anyways i will describe the photo to you because it's basically her in a in a low-cut blouse and not even like low-cut low-cut not like uh a hooters waitress or anything it's like there you go that's it right there it's just like a top that doesn't even really show. It's just a low cut shirt, man. I mean, that's acceptable for classroom attire. I mean, are, you think these are sexy Instagram photos, dude? Get on Instagram. You'll see crazier <laughs> stuff than this on the front page, man. This is what they kicked this girl off for. I feel there's some shenanigans going on here. I feel there's a deeper story. They didn't. They they wanted her off the team for some reason. But too sexy. I would say too she sexy. she is sexy. Now don't get me wrong. She is a sexy woman. But she is probably a horrible volleyball player. Is my guess. Well, then just well, then kick her off the team because she's a poor volleyball player. Yes, yeah, that's, that's that's not hard to do. That's an easy fix. She's probably well liked. I mean, there is you know I don't I wouldn't know, but I'm sure attractive people sometimes. Now, let's get it straight here. They do have great uh, benefits to being attractive in the world. It's not like it's a... Uh, it's not <laughs> a secret here. You're not the underdog at every event you go to. But there are occasions, especially for women, not really for men, but for women, where if they're too attractive, that can definitely count against them if they're trying to get into, like, uh, reporting's a good example. Like, you'll see, like, lo- just local... Now, I know it happens on national level, but... Local news reporters will get the nastiest comments from people on social media. And so like Nikki Burdon of Channel 2, like will share them in the morning. Some of the stuff people write to her, I'm just like, dude, you got to be. I, I can't even imagine sending a message out like that. Like you're fat. You need to wear different outfits. Try harder next time. What? I was like, bro, what? It's like insanity. Why? I don't know why people feel they they have the right to do that, but uh, you know, dude, I'm I'm discovering more and more that dudes on Twitter are creepy, creepy dudes, man. Like, we had one today. It's just harassing like some of our people that listen to the show. Now he was like, in all caps, he was like, "I tried to talk to another woman today, and she ignored my third request. I'm sick of this. Why can't I find any good looking women on Twitter to talk to?" Like all caps. What? Oh, I, I guess that, I'm just that's like that. uh, some creepy dude that would start following us. I'm like, dude, get out! And then almost like I, I don't care if you follow us or not. You're a freaking weirdo, man. I don't know, but anyways, what do you think about this, Lee? I mean, what's what's going on here? Why? Give us something. Why was this girl? Why was she kicked off the team? She's probably not very good at volleyball. So it had nothing to do with the picture. Coach, well, she was, says my teammates have swimsuit photos that are more revealing than me in a tank top. Is, it is that true? I don't. Well, I've been she, on Instagram. Probably if she's in high school, if she's in college, she is a black female. Now, does that have anything? I know Lee hates race questions, but does that have anything to do with? It? Is that Prob- a possibility? I mean, if her are her teammates, or does she have any I, like teammates? I, I, I have no idea, but it's a possibility. I would hope I that's guess. not the case. I feel like that would have came out in this Instagram message or text or whatever. Yeah, I would hope so. So I don't know, but th- then there was another story that I don't have up there where a. Uh, a NFL cheerleader was kicked off the team because she put up a picture of her in a swimsuit. And apparently the team said, you can't put any pictures of yourself 
in swimsuits, I guess, on your personal account. That that might have something to do with them, and and their uh, what they release to the media and stuff. And so I, that that, I, I that has more bearing. But it was than a private. A I, apparently, it was a private account. The only people she let follow her could see. It, very weird. I don't know. And then they also said like their rules are, you can't fraternize with the players at all. If you're in a restaurant, listen to this rule. If you're in a restaurant eating, and an NFL player comes down to eat, you have to leave immediately. I'm like the cheerleader. Yeah, that's crazy, it's, man. It's, it's there's a reason though. Because there's probably a long there's history. There's probably things uh. like that happening where they... Okay, let me read Mr. Danny Haley's uh, Twitter message to one of the females that runs our social media account. All caps. Can I at least have one day, one day that I can keep a conversation going with a girl slash lady on here and not have it end suddenly and be left hanging on here without warning? Can I at least have one whole day that on here? That's all I'm asking. This guy's a freak. Maybe it's a joke. No, you follow his account. Uh, he apparently does that to all kinds of people on here. And then he goes, I'm going to get off here for a bit so I can t- cool off temper-wise. Dan is highly frustrated right now, so he's getting off Twitter. This this guy's going to... Did like, he write it himself in the third person? <laughs> yeah, I know. Like This dude's a creep. This guy's going to kill someone. I mean, someone. there's people with psychological issues in the world his picture is even more amazing like he he's like some i don't know he's like i don't let's stop talking about this guy like, i don't care he's a creepo you know anyway. i'm saying like why even give him any spotlight at all uh, well because he's an idiot that's why just is he on. our idiot of the he's week? not our idiot <laughs> of the week but anyway so what do you think man this girl she she in deep water or what no she's not in deep well here's water. her response we'll go this, okay coach no i mean it's a school Okay, coach. However, I f- she said, take, I'll take the picture down. And this is to her coach. I feel like I'm being body shamed because I'm not flat chested. I'm not trying to show my boobs, coach. I can't make them go away. In these pictures, I just got my hair done and I really like my makeup and thought the pictures were pretty. My teammates have swimsuit photos that are more revealing than me in a tank top. I will delete them if you really want me to, but I feel like because people say I'm pretty, I'm being sexualized. There's a history of black women. Stop you here. There's a history of black. Oh, you want to silence the women, huh? Yeah. Oh, you're getting hit with that misogyny (laughs) alert tonight, brother. We got you figured out over here. Let me just tell you. Let me finish. Let me finish. I'm I'm gonna let you finish. You're saying silence them. Hashtag silence them from Lee. You heard it here. There's nothing more important than college women's volleyball in the world. There's a history of black women being. Because of their bodies being sexualized, and that's what appears to be happening to me. What do you think about that? Last week, there was a woman complaining about what's his face? Who? The singer, Bruno Mars. Oh yeah, yeah. Bruno. She had a more she had a more compelling argument than, oh, than this lady. Oh, I does. don't know, brother. I don't know why you run away from no, the race issues, that man. That woman, that woman complained about Bruno Mars. That doesn't affect her life from day to day. This is affecting her life. That's true. She has a bigger case. I just want to play women's down. volleyball in college. That women's volleyball team is probably how she's getting to college. And do you think about that? She's oh. so for sure she has a full ride scholarship. It could be. It might be helping. It doesn't have to be a full ride for it to be a difference. In oh, then get your <laughs> then get your sexy ass off Instagram and start hitting the books. That would be my advice. Oh my God! Did you hear what he just said? <laughs> that was Lee. Whoa. Lee is getting hit with a second misogyny alert. (laughs) Get your sexy ass off Instagram and start hitting them books. Hashtag race card. (laughs) All right. I'm just trying to move this story alone because we we have things we have to get to. Keep moving, man. We have to get to. Okay, what do we got? What do you want to get to next? Did you know that this year, April Fool's Day and Easter falls on the same day? Yeah, I do Okay, who's to blame? Hit it. What? Was that your segue? That's a horrible segue. All right, who's to blame? (laughs) All right, it's time for Who's to Blame, where we take a topic. One person argues for that topic. The other one argues against it. Lee, what do we got this week? Okay, so you know, before the show, after the show, we always have these ridiculous arguments and debates. And this week, you guys step in here, and you're arguing, and you're debating Disney animated movies. So this week, we're going to put you on the spot and let you blame 
Disney movies. All right, John. Animated animated Disney movies. Okay, sure. Um, John, do you want to be for the Disney movies or against Disney movies? I'll take the anti. Oh, do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Uh, you go first. All right. Disney movies. I mean, these movies are like piece of American history. When you think about growing up as a young person, these are embedded in your memory. They were great, man. They Everyone knows them. It's something we can all you know, basically bond together over. You meet someone your age, you know which Disney movies were great to watch. They were always pushing the envelope. They had female lead characters, which, I mean, just didn't happen much, man. A lot of time the female was the lead of the movie, like Mulan was a good one. Brave's another good one. There's tons of movies where, you know, most movies, action movies, the dudes are, are, are front and center. So it's obviously good for women. It's good for young children to have these memories to hang into. And really, the Pixar movies are actually great freaking movies. That's what really matters. I mean, Toy Story, it'll make you cry, man. Let's be honest here. All the picks up is a tearjerker. These, some of these Disney movies are better than actual film themselves. So I don't know, John, how are you going to argue against one of the great American staples? But go ahead. Tell me why Disney movies are terrible. This is why, first of all, you mentioned history. They distort and, and, and change history just to make that dollar. The, look, Pocahontas, how much is that accurate? In Bridget. no way, shape, or form. And then what they can't do on their own, they just rip off things. Lion King, come on, it's Hamlet. It's Hamlet. They're just ripping, everything's a total rip off. And if you actually look at the original stories that they're making, they just distort these stories. They're nothing close to the original. They're distorting them just to make that dollar. They're talking about how wholesome and everything they are, but people don't realize that Universal Pictures is part of Disney and what kind of movies have they made throughout the years. Disney, shame on you. You do anything for that dollar. You're not about wholesome. You're about that money. Greed. Mm. That's all you care about. Wow. So John just took, he took all the little kids of the world and he just crapped all in their sandwiches, man. And you know what I will say, John? Hey, that's that's that uh, uh, participation award that you're talking about. You know what they did change about Pocahontas, my friend? You know what they did change? They made the woman the lead of the movie. Unlike you, you would want John Smith to be in charge okay, of the movie. All right, we I got you, John. About- we hear you, John Smith. How can we pick the whitest name in the history of the world? He comes along. Pocahontas, you would want the movie, her not to talk, her to put the baby on her back, and let the man do all the lifting. Ain't that right, John? John. John so Smith, the movie? look at that. What was the movie that you all picked right, to win your right, little uh, right, Disney thing? Out, Aladdin. Out. Oh, male lead. And John, Thank you. we all uh. know you looked up to Quasimodo every day of your life, son. So I don't know what you you're talking about. You kind of look like him, yeah. <laughs> all right. Wow. So shots fired. There Roll we go. It. Who's the blame? Who's blame? Can't tell me who's to blame. Who's to blame? We love you, Mickey. All right. So that was who's to blame, Lee. Where do you side on? Uh, here we go. A cool story, bro. Drop. Here we go. What do you stand on Disney movies? I was like looking for the hidden images on the cover art. So are they good or bad? You love them or you could live without them? The hidden images. Are you talking uh, about like like the yeah? But like <laughs> I would say like early Disney movies were pretty cool, like Beauty and the Beast and The Little Mermaid, Little Mermaid. But like the newer ones, like they got weird quick, you know. Pixar is the new ones. Those are fantastic. I don't consider those Disney movies. No, they were 100% Disney movies. What are you talking about? What, about, what are you talking about? Like, like, like Wally, is that your, that your movie? Yeah, uh, Wally's good. I mean, it's, it's Wally, pure propaganda. Wally's a, uh, it's a anti Walmart. It's an anti America movie, truly. It's where we're going to be in a couple of years. So you guys better start watching your Disney movies. Okay, moving on. All right. What, so what else do we got going on? Is there any other stories that still out? Corey Feldman is, uh, He's back in the news. Uh, John, what do you know about Corey Feldman? Give us a little history lesson of him Corey over the last Feldman. couple of years. Uh, in the ca- last couple of years, nothing. Um, I think the last good movie he's been in was probably The Burbs. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, I mean, that's pretty old. It was well, like early 90s. You know he's a little bit nutty these days, right? These days? And have you, yeah. heard, have you heard what he said about uh, Mr. Charlie Sheen? What, what did he say about Charlie Sheen? Well, he said uh, Charlie Sheen uh, was a rapist who, okay, I don't know if he's mentioned him by name. I think he has this point, but he pretty much said someone, while he was filming the movie Lucas, a star of the movie, raped him during the uh, filming of the movie. But he was in in Lucas. 
Well, he must have been around. That was the, the other Corey, Corey well, Haim. I, I think he said he raped Corey Haim, too. So, so anyway, Lee, well, why I mean, don't you... Him, gonna, him and Corey Haim were in a few movies together. Yeah, no, but I think he... So, I mean, that, I mean if, if Corey Haim was going to tell somebody that he was raped, uh, it might have been him. Yeah, so he's saying, anyways, all right, so Lee, why don't you read the story? So, I, so he just, you know, he... I was attacked tonight. A man opened my car door and stabbed me with something. Please say prayer for us. Thank God it was only myself and my security in the car when three men approached. While security was distracted with a guy, a car pulled up and attacked me. I'm okay. So, like, who goes around stabbing Corey Feldman? Like, what's the story well, he's saying there? He's saying there's, like, these power people in Hollywood that are... That are out. That are covering up all this, uh, these rapes and things like that. That's that's what. That's, but it's, I think everything that Charlie Sheen has done in the past few years, uh, I think a lot of people has given up on trying to cover. I mean, if, his if you're going to go through the trouble of having three people pull up in a car and distract and stab him, why would you not? Why would you stab him with something small that wouldn't kill him? He says just permanently silenced them. He says the Hollywood elite's coming after him, man. He's talked too much about the the young men being raped by these Hollywood stars. This is a man <laughs> trying to drum up more oh, media, what? trying to go viral. What he was not. Listen, well, this is David, a very your own typical, words. He's kind. Of, you said, did refer to him as nutty. So I mean, he's trying. He's got something. He's he's like trying to start a GoFundMe for a for, movie or something to generate funding for a movie about pedophilia in Hollywood. This Here's is the, the Illuminati. Every atta- time, no, this, they know. They're every time someone stabs themselves, it's never with a, like a dangerous knife. It's always some like small, tiny knife, brother man. Which is what happened here. Do you believe in the Illuminati? Do you believe this is true or not? You don't believe there's. Do a- I believe that the Illuminati is coming after Corey Feldman if with he's a gonna, very if it, small? knife that is non-life threatening no maybe it's no, a I warning maybe that. it's a warning like don't you make that movie no i it's think not if the illuminati warning. were after him we wouldn't even know about well, it. Brother, yeah, the, hey the illuminati they, like, like poison his food they or can't something. kill the man he's too famous now that it come out not if he died from like 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 poisoning over time that's what they would do he's turned into looking like michael jackson though to be fair i mean he dresses he's been doing that for years i saw him at a convention a couple of years ago and uh he was, he was. He was doing that when he was in the uh, uh, the the premiere for a Dream a Little Dream babe, way back in the day. They were pals. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't who's know. his girlfriend? That's, I don't know, like but she looks Egyptian like or something. looks like she's upset, man. And you're laughing about this, acting like is he a is he vape nation? He's vape nation. You can see him vaping on the uh, hospital bed, so <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> Life threatening. I need uh, to get my vape in. Still bleh, bleh. All it right, pierced my lung. Uh, let's get to our idiot of the week, and then we'll get to uh, a dear John segment. Do you have the Do you have the story out of the infamous place where all great idiots come from? This is not the DC? first time <laughs> this guy has become idiot of the week. All <laughs> right, it's time for. Or idiot of the week. Oh my god, I am surrounded by idiots. You idiot! To the idiot mobile. You idiot. You're an idiot. Well, that's because you're an idiot. All right, so our idiot of the week comes up from Florida. Big shocker, everybody's surprised there. Florida man makes a home- homemade whiskey bomb. Tries to kill another man's chickens. Now you're gonna love this. He's not smiling in his mugshot. Yeah, he, yeah. He's not. That's good. He shows a little bit of uh, remorse. Remorse. Florida man was arrested after he concocted a homemade bomb and tried to kill another man's chickens with it. He's 55 year old. He built the IED. You're gonna like this from a Canadian mist bottle. Pyrodox FFG black powder, sand, and a cannon fuse. A witness said he threw a it in. Cannon fuse? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I mean, it's like a cannon. You know, like who has a cannon fuse just laying around? Well, you're gonna love it. it gets better. A witness said the man threw it into his backyard where it detonated, <laughs> intending to kill his chickens. The man whose nickname is Spider had apparently been engaged in an argument with a man over a BB gun. So maybe he knows Lee, who makes BB gun stories up. And he was charged with possession or discharge of a destructive device. I mean, what else can you say? I mean, this guy obviously <laughs> deserves to be idiot of the week for sure. What is it about Florida, man? I don't know. What is it about Florida? Bad times for Spider? sure. <laughs> Spider? Spider is our idiot of the week. So there you go. All right, well, let's get into everyone's favorite segment, everyone's favorite place on the internet. It's time for Dear John. Dear John. 
All right, it's time for Dear John. Lee's going to read a question somebody sent in. John's going to give him advice. Let's go. This one comes in. Dear John, it seems I will never meet my Mr. Right. Every person I'm attracted to is either in a relationship Uh or doesn't like me. My questions are, A, when is it okay just to settle? And B, do you have to be attracted to your Mr. Right? Or can you take the risk that the supposed spark love will come in time? From tired of dating. Mm. Oh boy. Well, if you go with uh, with, with Lee's take, it's okay to, to date someone who's four hundred pounds. <laughs> oh um, I don't. I mean, you don't have to be uh, uh, love at first sight to go on a date with someone. I mean, it's it's not. You're in no way, shape, or form going to be chastised for playing the field a little bit uh, before you settle with somebody. And uh, I mean, I I think uh, a majority of uh, of uh, what uh, people the, the the meat and potatoes of a relationship is something that lasts, and if if it's if you build a relationship on something that happens as a flash of the pan or something right away, that's probably not going to be something that's going to work. So I mean, just actually get out there, put yourself out there, and uh, uh, I mean, don't don't shoot for tens when when uh, <laughs> you're not a ten. That's I mean, someone another one. <laughs> Don't shoot for tens. I'm just going to pencil that one in. <laughs> Write that down. Don't shoot oh, for tens. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. <laughs> this is the part of the show where David and Lee bury me. <laughs> you buried yourself, man. I'm not burying you. That's brilliant. Don't shoot for tens. That's a cancel the misogyny alert t shirt. <laughs> we got a new one coming out. A, don't shoot for tens. Don't, don't shoot for tens. Can we put like John's parentheses. face? <laughs> parentheses if you're not a 10. <laughs> don't forget that. that that's Dear John of the Week. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was telling. At first, he started off with settle. <laughs> he's like, he you just, need to settle, and then he's like, screw it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shoot for tens. Ooh, all right. If you want to get advice from this guy, John, over here, uh, send us a message on Twitter or email us, bybpod at gmail.com. Now it's time for some beautiful, attractive people in Blame Yourself. Please. Honestly, when I first started doing this show, you said you have to take selfies of yourself and put it on the blame your selfie. And I literally thought you were insane. Selfie. I was like, selfie. why would selfie. anyone selfie. take a selfie of blame themselves? Blame your selfie. 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 All right. It's time for Blame Your Selfie, where we uh, listeners of the program, friends of the show, send their selfies on Twitter and we feature them. We show them some love on here on hashtag blame your selfie. Let's get it going. First up, we have the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend. It's Michael Anthony. And he said, this is a selfie from over the weekend of myself and my brother, Benjamin. And he's rocking the Blame Your Brother shirt, man. So I got to give some big ups to this, Michael. You the man. That's a good one. All right. This is Ball Pink Gangster. This is Katie. We're crazy about Katie. Says, Jessica Jones and coffee, the best way to start the morning. Hashtag F pants and hashtag blame your selfie. So, True I mean, or false, Jessica Jones and coffee, best way? It's a good way. I haven't seen the new season I yet. I can think of at least 100 things better okay. than Jessica well, Jones to start off a morning. But that's I, just me. All right, you'll be sending uh, Katie some uh, wine and uh, cheese <laughs> next week. <laughs> she is holding a cat that says crazy cat, lady. So, a know. coffee cup, yeah. I dig the slippers. You said a, a cat. <laughs> She's holding a cat that says crazy cat. Lady, and I'm which just would, senile. That would be crazy. Yeah, that would be crazy. <laughs> All right, next up, we have social media coordinator for Blaming Brother. If you don't know, L here from New York and Kentucky super fan is helping run our Twitter account. So if you see tweets during the day, it's probably from her. And she's rocking the glasses here. I dig glasses. I love women that wear glasses. That's always a plus. So it says, yeah, hey. it's a Snapchat filter, right? No, those are real glasses. <laughs> uh, I'm going to I'm gonna believe those are real glasses. This is the Matrix. It says, hey, yeah, I'll blame your brother. Hashtag blame your selfies. So, yeah, that's awesome to have a new member of the team. Yeah, man. I, she's been doing a great job. really appreciate it. Her and Bree Poe are helping with our social media accounts. So really appreciate I don't know why I'm putting thumbs up. There's no camera on me. All right. This is uh, Ha Simpson uh, at Squeaky Ha. And it says, reduce, reuse, recycle. Happy Thursday to my Twitter peeps. 
And she mentions a bunch of us and says, and yes, even you, Twitterello. Even me. And it's at her office wearing glasses once again. And a big filing cabinet with a recycle bin at the bottom where it seems all the files are falling into. That's number 13. Number 13. File 13. File 13. I I, I got it. I do do like to say that... that, uh, uh, how Simpsons uh, takes on on Twitter are hilarious. Yeah. She's really really She's funny. funny. So follow her at Squeaky High. This is River. I mean, if we're putting lieutenant generals in our in our cabinet, he'd be a lieutenant general one hundred percent. I would be Tony Soprano. These would be my goons right here. He would and be on the boat crossing the Potomac with you. Yeah, he would be starting a revolution. But he would be one of my guys going around collecting money from the strip clubs. Uh, <laughs> River says decided to go for the classic meatball marinara from Subway. If you don't like my choice, don't blame me. Blame your selfie. Also, blame your lunchie. The meatball sub, I love it. It's one of my three favorite subs from Subway. We used to eat it all the time growing up. Do you yeah. get anything on it? Uh, I, a little bit. I don't. Yeah, tomatoes, black olives, Parmesan cheese. This man, madman, puts mayonnaise on his meatball that, marinara. That, that's a bit odd, but <laughs> but you're a madman, River. Me and Lee used to paint with our parents on the weekend. It was a fun time. Art art projects. And I wish painting apartments every weekend. Wall and, painting. And they would always make White. me and Lee go to Subway, <laughs> or me to pick up the food. Yeah. Get the food. We get a meatball. Everything on it everything on it and i hated lettuce so it was unfortunate but i still the the love for meatball never went away so meatball sub always a good choice at this subway so there you go thank you i love those those cookies look delicious cookies are good if you can get them fresh or even better and here's john says just woke up woke up from some legit napping man i needed that hashtag blame your selfie so there you go that's for that's for you jason (laughs) for you brother i mean like (laughs) never mind all right gonna leave that there and gonna search your own there. comments there all right was that all the selfies good all yeah. right so if you want to be in that just hit hashtag blame yourself and do it it is okay so we got that out of the way now it's time for the major key so let me give you a major key where is the key this is not the key i want the key give us the keys so let me give you a major key and you really do have the key everybody i mean everybody stand up right now everybody all right i think we got our major key lee what is the major key from episode 85 don't shoot for tens unless you're a 10 that was your major key to win i mean everybody stand up right now everybody i got i got the keys now all right there we go guys that was episode 85 hopefully you enjoyed it um, you know, what you need to do, go check out blameyourbrother.net. That's the website where all the good stuff happens. Half Pint's still doing his MCU recaps, and uh, Adam Cox is doing some great stuff. He's doing great articles. So go there for articles. All past episodes are all there. Blameyourbrother.net. Bookmark that. Don't forget it. Always keep it in your heart and your minds. All of our social media links are there, different ways to subscribe to the show. Our Amazon link is there. So if you buy things through Amazon, go to blamebrother.net, click on that Amazon link, and then buy your items, and we get a small percentage. doesn't cost you any extra. If you can remember to do that, that helps quite a bit, more than you would know. Uh, you can buy Blame Your Brother shirts um, through Teespring, or I would suggest you go to bybpod.com slash shirts and just order pre-order one for $5. So that's what I would say. But if you want to buy one at full price, the link's there. Radio Vegas.rocks. Those guys stream us every Thursday on internet radio. We appreciate it. Go to Radio Vegas.rocks or get the Radio Vegas app and listen to them 24 7. And you can also email the show on the website, uh, real email, fake email, whatever you want to put on there. It allows you to do it. And you can even send a voicemail if you want to do that. We'd love to hear those from you as well. So I guess that's everything. I guess uh, with that being said, Lee, is there anything else? Don't blame yourself when you can blame. Your brother. Today is Thursday, March 29, 2018. There are 277 days of the year. On March 29, 1943, World War II food rationing of meat, fats, and cheese began, limiting consumers to the purchase of Burns. an average of two pounds per, per week for This must never be seen. Land Marry anyone. And using a Why Q Has anybody system. seen this? The Associated Press knew it. They have to be found from a consumer's viewpoint. The unration oasis of food will be the restaurant or other public eating place. That is today's memory of the week. David, John, and Lee, back to you.